You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hello and welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is about entrepreneurship and I'm going to talk about intellectual property. We talked about this subject a bit on a previous episode when we did a book review of the book Against Intellectual Property by Stefan Kinsella and had um, Stefan on the line doing an author interview about his book. But in this episode, I would like to focus more on the issue of intellectual property as far as it relates to entrepreneurship itself and the kinds of questions that come up as you get involved in entrepreneurship regarding intellectual property. I'm going to argue that I think intellectual property is like a cancer on entrepreneurship uh, in many ways. It, this is not how I thought about IP when I first started out as an entrepreneur. In fact, I expected IP to be a very important part of my business. But the more that I learned about it, the more I think intellectual property actually prevents innovation. I think it's immoral in itself, all intellectual property law. Um, I think it does end up promoting conflict Uh, which is sort of the opposite of what entrepreneurship is supposed to be about. And it's a massive diversion of time and energy uh, to unproductive uses. I think it is fundamentally unnecessary in terms of uh, what it's supposed to do in uh, promoting innovation and and, uh, enabling people to make money out of ideas. There are lots of ways in which you can do both of those things without using intellectual property law. So this is my opinion about IP. Um, I know that it's um, not the mainstream opinion about the importance of IP for entrepreneurs, and it's certainly not the opinion that I started out with. So hopefully this will be useful, even if you have a very different view of IP, just to give you some, some food for thought, really, about what the problems with IP are and how they impact um, the experience of anybody who's who's doing entrepreneurship. So, like everyone, I started out thinking that IP was going to be very, very important for my business. This viewpoint is very much ingrained in the current uh, culture of entrepreneurship. Uh, if you talk to any investors uh, about an idea that you have for uh, a new venture... They will ask you whether or not your ideas are protected and whether or not you're able to uh, patent uh, important innovations or whether or not you're able to protect yourself uh, through copyright in other ways. Uh, and it's a key criterion for a lot of people to, to look at whether or not uh, a venture is worth investing in. I can really understand why, uh, because intellectual property is so ingrained Uh, in the way that we currently do business and the way that uh, people think about new ventures. And I thought it was going to be really important. Um, When I started my company, I had an idea about how to solve a technical problem in software in the particular kinds of computer simulation that I was involved in doing that was going to use distributed processing. So I'd seen the uh, project you probably have heard of SETI at home, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence at Home. It's a project that started in the 90s where you can download a piece of software and it will do some uh, processing of data on your own computer, your PC, and it will send that back to, I think, NASA or somebody. Um, And they use uh, all of the processing power of all of these uh, personal computers around the world to uh, process a lot of information. And it's a way of distributing a problem, breaking up a problem into little chunks and then getting a lot of computers to work on the same problem. And I thought that was an approach that could be applied to a particular kind of problem that I was trying to solve, which was how to run what's called a visibility graph analysis, a very uh, specific kind of analysis of street networks, looking at what you can see and where you can go as a pedestrian. Anyway, it's a very um, specific technical field. The point is, I thought that I had found a new way of doing something and that we should protect this idea because this would be very valuable. And that's what everybody starts out thinking when they 
develop a new idea in entrepreneurship, I think. And I believe that this is a kind of looking to appeal to authority in protecting yourself when you start a business. So starting a business is a risky and difficult thing to do. And by looking at what you can protect with IP law, what you're really doing is looking at how you can get someone else, i.e. lawyers and ultimately the power of the state, to force other people not to compete with you. How you can appeal to a single authority who will decide who's allowed to have this idea and who isn't. And that's how currently people think about intellectual property. The justification for intellectual property is that it promotes innovation. When you look into this in detail, you find out that this is a complete prejudice. All the evidence uh, that I've seen is that intellectual property actually prevents innovation, um, as you would expect it to do, because ultimately it prevents the sharing of ideas. And it's a fairly obvious fact that innovation happens when people share and change and mix ideas together to come up with new ideas. But the evidence from innovations in history is that intellectual property was not necessary for most of the really important innovations that we've had. And I won't go into the history of this because you can simply read, read about it. A very good summary can be found in the book Against Intellectual Monopoly by Baldwin and Levine. And they go through a, a whole series of key innovations and they show how I, they weren't dependent on IP, but it, IP actually uh, hindered the development of these ideas. So they talk about the development of flight and they talk about the development of... Uh, penicillin and various other things and they show how innovations did not depend on IP but were actually held back by them I I really recommend that book uh, alongside the book Against Intellectual Property by Stefan Kinsella that we talked about on a previous podcast so the historical record is that IP hasn't been necessary for innovation um, and it's not necessary to uh, protect your ideas either A good example of this is it is still completely possible in many uh, respects to protect your ideas by other means. So I protected my software simply by secrecy. Um, This is because I received some advice very early on in my business, which turned out to be really, really helpful advice. I talked to an intellectual property lawyer, a friend of mine who really knows this field, about patenting the particular type of application that I developed and his advice was that it would cost a fortune and that applying for a patent would ultimately just mean that you'd make it easier for other people to reverse engineer the idea that you'd done uh, and find a way around it whereas he suggested that um, your your idea is already protected through copyright uh, if someone copies your software, and there is, so there isn't any point in patenting it. Now, I don't actually believe in copyright either, um, but the I, but the advice was really helpful um, because it prevented me from wasting a lot of time trying to patent uh, the software application when really it was possible just to simply get on with the business and to not tell anyone about how we had managed to create a software application that could process a lot more data than had previously been possible. It's also not necessary uh, in order to protect ideas because these days there are so many ways of protecting your ideas from being copied. I mean, just to use the software example, it's totally possible to have online applications now where users register um, and use the application online. So they're not even storing the application locally. And in fact, they have to access your server in order to to use the application. So you don't really need IP to protect that from copying because the users, if they're not registered users, they won't get access to your software anyway. And consequently, you're protected through your contract with them. You know, you can actually just cut them off from the server if they're not paying, paying you. So that's another way in which you don't need to rely on the law. You can just rely on the way that you do business to, to protect your idea.
people, um, when they think about the importance of IP, they think of cases like musicians and how would musicians make any money if they didn't have the opportunity to protect their music from being copied. There's loads of evidence now that the most prolific copiers are also the most prolific music buyers and that you can get paid um, through other means than use of legal threats. You can get, even get paid voluntarily, as Radiohead showed uh, when they released an album on a voluntary basis, uh, and that copying also helps spread the word and gets other people to know about your, your music or whatever your um, intellectual product is and can help um, to actually expand interest in your product. And, of course, for, for movies, uh, you can still make money out of uh, showing in cinemas and so forth. So there's lots of ways in which it's possible to create uh, products that rely on ideas and still protect them, uh, even if they are copied by other people. You can still make money out of them, although it is changing the business model that uh, used to exist for things like music and movies. The real thing that I came to understand about IP, which is, I think, the biggest problem with it, is that it's fundamentally immoral um, as a kind of law. I'm a, a big fan of property rights. I think it's very, very important to respect property rights. But copying is not theft, and ideas are not property. And this is just something that, when you think about it and do a little bit of research on it, at least for me, it just became completely obvious that we're using copied ideas all the time. I'm using copied words to do this podcast. I'm using copied ideas to think with um, about this podcast. Um, so the idea that by doing that, I'm taking away something from somebody else, um, it just doesn't make any sense. Theft is a real thing where when you take something from somebody else, you deprive them of it. Copying doesn't deprive the original owner of the idea that they had. They can still use that idea, and you've copied it, but you haven't taken it away from them. And that's fundamentally one of the greatest things that we, we have to create more wealth and value in the world, is that we can share ideas and all become richer in the process without depriving each other of the original use of the idea. What this means is that intellectual property is ultimately always incoherent, uh, because we have to share ideas in order to communicate, in order to get anything done. And intellectual property has to recognize that ideas are shared. Otherwise, you wouldn't even be able to have a conversation with anyone without paying the original owners of whoever, the, whoever invented the words and so forth. So there have to be all of these provisions which are about whether or not something's been in in public use for a specific period of time and what specific kinds of ideas can be considered property and other kinds can't be considered property. And ultimately, these are all completely arbitrary distinctions with no real foundation, whereas physical property is very clear. If you own something and somebody takes it from you without your permission, that's theft. Whereas copying, you have to get into all of these arbitrary distinctions of, well, it's only theft if it's a particular kind of idea that's copied in a particular kind of way, and so on and so forth. So what this means is that intellectual property is actually not property. What it is, is a kind of legal monopoly. It's like in the olden times when someone could appeal to the king to be the only candle maker in town and the king would give them a license and then they would be like the official candle maker and nobody else would be allowed to make candles. Intellectual property is exactly the same thing. You appeal to the patent office or the legal authorities that protect copyright law to be the only one who gets to, to use a certain idea and then nobody else gets to use that idea. And that's simply a kind of market-fixing monopoly using the power of the state. It's got nothing to do with entrepreneurship and innovation and competition and free markets. It's got everything to do with fixing markets. So that's why I think it's uh, immoral. You're ultimately using force in order to prevent people from competing with you. And it messes up our understanding of morality because you have these adverts going out sort of comparing copying to real examples of theft, like stealing a car. Um, and that confuses 
the line between you know what is genuinely an immoral act like theft of real property and what is breaking an immoral and stupid law like uh, pi online piracy and copying another thing about intellectual property is that it promotes conflict this should really be the opposite to entrepreneurship which is all about promoting voluntary interaction and free trade and peaceful uh, cooperation between people intellectual property actually promotes fights uh, it promotes legal fights and it promotes people getting into conflict with each other about who should get this legal monopoly on use of an idea you can see this in the growth of the IP troll industry um, these are companies who buy up patents and then send out threatening letters extorting uh, businesses for payouts for use of patents and they try and do this for all manner of uh, ridiculous things uh, there's uh, a nice article which I'll put in the show notes about the a company that tried to extort money for use of the concept of a shopping cart on websites and got a huge amount of money until somebody actually took them on in court um, and that time they lost but most of the time um, people are using the IP system to simply extort money and to promote conflict between, uh, between businesses I know that that was the, uh, the case in my own case I actually got into a legal uh, fight uh, because I believed in intellectual property uh, when I started my business we registered a whole series of domain names and we happily got, got going and then a couple of years into our business we found that another company uh, in the same town as us had registered a very similar domain name with a hyphen in it um, was the only difference and so they had the same company name as us and we were a partnership but they were limited so they, they were um, able to, to set up under the same name they weren't doing the same thing as us but they were sort of in the same industry I mean we could have seen each other at the same trade fairs and we freaked out and thought that this was uh, something that we would have to fight uh, on the idea that somehow we should have ownership of anything related to our name. So we paid lawyers a lot of money to see what we could do about it, and they were quite happy to take a lot of money from us and advise us about how we could register our, our logo as a trademark and what we might be able to do, um, prevent this other new company from using um, such a similar uh, identity to us. And frankly, the whole thing was a complete waste of time, especially because they weren't really pretending to be us. They just liked the name that we were using and wanted to do something in their own slightly similar field, um, but really was no, no competitive threat to us. After wasting a huge amount of money on lawyers, um, I actually met up with um, the CEO of this, of this other startup and we had a, a chat about it and essentially agreed to get along and just get on with our own businesses and agreed that it was a waste of time fighting and I'm very glad that I did that because we wasted so much time and energy on something that ultimately we didn't need to and we got caught um, in the idea of pursuing conflict rather than trying to generate value for our clients this is why I think it's a, a hugely unproductive diversion of time and resources it was in my own case and you can see in all of the legal battles that are going on there's so many articles on the web about the telecoms industry uh, particularly in the mobile space all these fights between apple and samsung and various other people about um, use of patents on particular aspects of smartphone technology they're all completely tangled with each other and wasting a huge amount of time and resources fighting each other instead of innovating and generating new ideas. I think in future, ultimately, um, intellectual property is being made obsolete by technology. Uh, technology has changed the marketplace so much because everyone really can see that copying isn't really theft. They know it deep down. They're just confused about, as I was, about why exactly um, it isn't the same as real theft. Um, 
But the, the, the key thing is that the technology of the internet has made copying and distribution so cheap that it, it is forcing changes in industries that were previously all about distribution, like the music industry, um, where very high margins were charged for people who essentially just were able to get an idea like a song out there. And the technology itself is fundamentally changing that business model, and ultimately it will make the idea of IP completely obsolete. But I don't know whether or not in the process we'll have to go through a period of ever-intensifying uh, legal wrangling and IP conflict of the kind that we're seeing at the moment. I think, in my experience, I now look at intellectual property as such a cancer on entrepreneurship that, unfortunately, when I consider what I would like to do in terms of entrepreneurial ventures, I don't want to do anything that involves a huge amount of IP wrangling and potential conflict. Future ventures that I do, I will uh, keep my uh, trade secrets a secret and protect myself in that way. I will protect uh, my presence and identity in the mar marketplace by buying up domain names uh, that I think will be relevant and protecting myself through ownership of those uh, real resources. And I'll just try not to get involved in any industries where I'm going to be facing a bunch of uh, IP trolls uh, because it's such a waste of time and energy and it's, I think, a very demoralizing thing to get involved with as an entrepreneur. And that, sadly, I think that means I, I don't really want to go into a field where I'd have to do a lot of defensive um, patent applications in just in order to protect myself, even if I didn't believe in it, just to protect myself from the IP trolls. This is something that, that uh, you just have to do in many industries now uh, because of all the patent wars that are going on. So that's what I've um, taken from the experience of learning about intellectual property. I don't think it's necessary for uh, a huge amount of businesses to, to really get uh, involved in the mess that is IP. I'm very glad that I didn't get more involved um, during my business, even though I did have... Uh, potentially patentable uh, software and ideas that I could have got a lot more uh, invested in the whole realm of intellectual property. And I hope it's useful for you to hear uh, at least my perspective from the entrepreneurial side of what the experience of uh, getting involved in a marketplace and IP is, is like. As always, I really appreciate any feedback, any thoughts that you have about this. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.